Hi! We have, I feel like, have not been on in a while. It's been a minute. <laughs> week goes by and it's so long. We set the intention to do it weekly, mm -hmm. so we will get there. <laughs> Stay focused. Yes. <laughs> you guys added uh, a few comments on some things that you were looking for help for with removing toxicity from your life. And one of them we wanted to address today was from the lovely Angie, mm -hmm. and that was on sleep. Mm. Boy, doesn't that get us all? Topic. Yes. It just gets us all. It's like a, like a really common thing that people are suffering from. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think there's so many different aspects to why somebody is not sleeping properly, or you're waking up in the middle of the night, or you have insomnia, or you're waking up too early, or what, there's just so many different aspects of it. Mm -hmm. And I am here sitting in front of you as a recoverist from chronic <laughs> fatigue syndrome. I was diagnosed, I wanna say around six, seven, eight with chronic fatigue syndrome, and sleep was like my Achilles heel. I had all these things I could manifest in my life, but this one little area of chronic fatigue syndrome was the one thing I couldn't let go of. And uh, it wasn't until my lovely husband, who likes to put it into the cold front for me, we were out on a date and he said, you know, Sarah, that's the one thing I don't like about you, is your story you tell yourself about chronic fatigue. And of course I was like, no, tell me it's a story. It's medically diagnosed, thank you. I have a label on me and I'm protected by that label. I went and peed. And by the time I was done peeing, I was like, holy shizness. This is a story that I'm repeating. So my first personal tip to you guys is that it's so much in our mind. The whole world gets interrupted sleep. And those who, do, let's say that those who sleep, like my husband, who can sleep through earthquakes, um, are still tired. So even though they may not necessarily be waking up or they can fall asleep early, they run around tired. I know a lot of people sleep great, but they still are tired. So it's just a part of the human experience. So let go, let go. I, of course, had God give me two fire sign children who think five hours of sleep every day is enough. And I get woke up at the five or six o'clock and I get, don't get to sleep until 11 or midnight. And I get woke up multiple times by nursing babies, milk wanting babies, whatever it is. And I am thriving. So there's a story behind it. I challenge you to let go of that story and just move into the acceptance that it's, you've got this. Yes, and I wanna add on to that. Um, at Tony Robbins seminar, he has one of his guys come up on stage and tell a story when they're getting into the health and wellness and nutrition aspect of his Unleash a Power Within. And that story was um, this gentleman's mother was, she had some sort of terminal illness and the doctor wanted to tell her that she only had X amount of days to live. And the speaker on stage, it was his mom, he said, please don't tell my mother this. Don't tell her that, let's write it out, let's see what we can do. And she was actually still living years later. Mm -hmm. So the doctor gave her like two weeks to live. Mm -hmm. And the, the point of the story is that when a doctor tells you you have something um, or you diagnose yourself with something, mm -hmm. you're, you begin to identify with the illness or the sickness or the disease. And that is, you don't have to do that. You may be having these symptoms and there may be a disconnect and what you're feeling is real, but mm -hmm. identifying with it is such a crutch. Mm -hmm. Perpetuating. Yes. Mm -hmm. so. And we don't want to dilute that there really is yes. um, disorder mm -hmm. or difficulty with sleep. Like this is real. I know I lay in bed for about an hour before I fall asleep. I got all sorts of magic thoughts happening or stressful thoughts happening. It's hard for me to fall back asleep when I get woke up because I get stuck on it. So we understand that there's a real physical thing outside of the emotional. We're just expressing how yeah. powerful your mind is mm -hmm. by leaning into surrender, acceptance. And then if you study, many people will thrive off five hour sleep cycles and you can learn where your cycles sit and you can try practicing those. I just read that there's ways that your bed can be faced. This is feng shui, this is energy, according to our equators that will help funnel energy through you rather than take from you when you're resting. So open the box up, ask spirit to guide you, your intuition, to discover why you're having sleep difficulties. Obviously, you all know, no tablets, 
devices, how do you wind down, don't do finances. I'm sure you guys are aware of it. Angie, I'm sure you're aware of those things. Diet. Diet's big, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, blue blockers are the little glasses that block out the blue lights from electronics and from TV. But if you can completely refrain from electronics of any sort, for a few hours before bedtime, it will make a big difference. And if you do go on your phone, um, on iPhones, I know there is a setting where you can put it on a more orangey tone instead of the blue tone. The blue tone messes with our brains mm -hmm. um, and it completely wires them. And then not eating or drinking past a certain point. So um, there's a lot of different information out there that will tell you don't eat past six or eight o'clock. So that's something, bio-individuality is something that I believe hugely in, which all of our bodies are completely different. Mm -hmm. And from day to day, we require different things. So mm -hmm. playing around with what that looks like for you, mm -hmm. maybe try six o'clock, maybe or start at eight o'clock and then work backwards actually, um, and see if you can tell a difference. Get a journal and write down, um, were you stressed before bed? Were you anxious before bed? What did you eat? Were you eating? Um, processed foods, were you eating um, something on the lighter side, water, juice, sugar, whatever it is, journal all of these things down and try to figure out if there's any pattern going on mm -hmm. that can give you answers. Meditation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you, you can, if you can meditate as you're falling asleep, like turn a guided meditation on, or just meditate to discover the why. Mm -hmm. If you think you know the why, ping us in the comment, ping us personally, and we're going to help you to find the solution with that why. But you have to first discover the why for you. Like maybe it's a series of things that are causing you to have a lack of sleep or the feeling of tired. Um, and, or maybe it's just one. And we could probably go on and on and yeah. on. <laughs> I actually did a whole sleep study. I took a course that was pretty extensive about sleep because again, it, it ruled my life. It was, I had chronic fatigue syndrome. And I doubt man, look at this guy. <laughs> I had five hours of sleep last night, five hours, look at this. <laughs> so we get with five hours sleep. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Who needs sleep? <laughs> Overrated. <laughs> Overrated. <gasps> okay, we love you guys. <laughs> Angie, thanks for sending it yeah, in. Thank you. And again, if you think you know why, do it do it. We're gonna this is our challenge to you, Angie. This is homework. We want you to do a five, ten minute how long? What are we doing? Meditation. Meditation. Five minutes for sure. Okay. Start with five minutes. They say you're supposed to meditate for how old you are. That's how many minutes. That's your goal, but we're not going to go there right now. So I want you to meditate and just ask for it to show up for you. What is going on? And when you think you know what is going on, we'll wait for the answer and then we'll give you some guidance from the non-doctors who <laughs> just have experience. So this is not medical advice. Not medical advice. Love you guys. Have a great day.